interested in a career in management consulting? Let's find out if you have what it takes to tackle the hardest part of the consulting case interview, the case math problem. And today I have a really difficult one for you. I'm a former McKinsey consultant and interviewer and I've interviewed over 500 candidates from top US schools. And in this video, we're going to practice one of the most difficult case math problems I've seen. And I'm gonna share my tips and tricks to ace any case math problem. Also, stay tuned for a trick to quickly calculate averages. By the end, case math will be easy for you. Get a pen and paper and let's jump in. Remember, calculators are not allowed. Let's assume our client is the Metropolitan Symphony Orchestra, an orchestra which we will call the MSO. The MSO is a non-profit orchestra based in a major US city, and their main source of funding is the Symphony's Endowment, which is a professionally managed pool of donated funds of which the MSO receives a small fixed percentage or draw each year. This isn't part of the case, but here's a refresher on what an endowment is. It is an investment vehicle that generates income in perpetuity for a non-profit organization. So say a donor contributes $100 to a new endowment fund. We will call this $100 the endowment base, and that money is then invested and over the course of the year makes a 10% return. Then at the end of the year, there is $110 in our endowment account. Now we can draw out the $10 to use and the $100 can continue growing and we can draw or make another withdrawal at the end of the next year. In theory, we could keep drawing from this endowment forever as long as we preserve the endowment base each year and make sure we, the, that the draw amount doesn't exceed the investment gains. Okay, so back to the MSO. So the MSO's endowment draw is considerably smaller than that of peer symphonies. So our client, Mrs. Jones, would like to immediately launch a three-year fundraising campaign to grow the endowment base. Her goal is to have the annual total endowment draw exceed $3 million by the end of the third year of the campaign. This would put the MSO on par with other symphonies of similar size and reputation. Given the following information garnered from the MSO's fundraising and finance staff, how large of an endowment draw can the MSO expect at the end of the campaign's third year? The endowment draw is calculated at the end of the year and the draw amount is equal to the draw percentage multiplied by the average ending endowment size of the prior three years. The draw percentage is capped at 5% and the projected size and timings of the uh, endowment donations are as follows. At the end of year one, $25.5 million. At the end of year two, $8.3 million. And at the end of year three, $5 million. At this point, you want to make sure you are answering the right question. So as the candidate, I would say, so you're looking for the draw amount at the end of year three, and we'd like it to exceed $3 million. Next, I'm going to want to plan out my approach and talk through it before jumping into the calculations. So I'm going to take some time to plan out my approach, and I do this to make sure I have all the information I need. If I don't, I can then ask for it. Also, it helps to talk the interviewer through your approach because your interviewer wants you to succeed and can help nudge you in the right direction if you are missing any of the key steps in your formula or approach. Before we jump into solving this, I have some helpful case prep videos and resources to help you succeed as a consultant in the video description. Also, if you find this video helpful, take a second to subscribe now. Okay, so I'm going to plot out the endowment formula that I'm going to use to calculate the draw to start. So what I know is that the current base plus any investment gain over the course of the year plus any donations received less the draw that we take out at the end of the year will equal our end base. Okay, great. And what I also know is that we are trying to calculate, oh, let's get that more straight. We're trying to calculate the end 
draw the draw at the end of year three so one two three we're looking to calculate this draw and we want it to be higher than 3.4 million uh, the other thing that we've been told is some information about donations so through our campaign we'll have 25.5 million dollars donated in year one 8.3 million donated in year two and five million dollars donated in year three the other thing that we've been told is i'm just going to add a few more years here we've been told that the draw amount at the end of um at the end of year one will equal to the average of the end base of the prior three years uh, times five percent i can see that i'm missing some key information so at this point the interviewer tells me that the current endowment size at the end of year zero is equal to 45 million dollars the endowment size at the end of the previous year, so year minus one, is $38 million. And the endowment size of the year before that, so year minus two, is $37 million. The expected annual rate of return on the endowment is 10% of the endowment base at the start of the year prior to adding in any new donations or subtracting the annual draw. Excellent. Now, with that information, I can start plugging in. We know that we had uh, 45 million at the end of year zero, 38 million at the end of year one, and 37 million at the end of year minus two. All right. So, to calculate the draw in year one, I simply need to find the average of these three prior year numbers and then multiply that by 5%. So if you're able to quickly do that um, average, go ahead and do so. But here's another method. It's the residual method for calculating averages. It sometimes might be faster than the plain average calculation we're used to doing. I'm just going to leave you to decide when and where to use this method. Okay, what we do here is we look at the three numbers and guess what the average would be. So I take a look at this and I'm going to guess 42. So that's my guess. After guessing, you want to um, subtract 42 from each of the numbers. So we've got 37, 38, and 45, less 42. Okay, so what we have here is a negative 5, a negative 4, and a 3. Now, if we had guessed correctly, then what this would mean is the sum, oh, these, this is a plus 3. Um, the sum of these numbers, the sum of these differences, or what we'd call residuals, will equal zero. But you can see in this case that our residuals do not equal zero. Um, so, which means our initial guess was wrong. But we can fix it, and we can use the difference that we get to fix our initial guess. So here we've got negative nine plus three is negative six, so our residual is off. But not by six, it's off by negative 6 over 3 because we've got three numbers which is negative 2 so all we've got to do is decrease our initial guess by 2 and we get our average which is 40 so our average in this case is 40 now we want to calculate 5% of this average so uh, what I like to do is uh, take a tenth and then divide it by 2 to get 5% because that's just easier for me to do so 10% um, of 40 is 4 and four divided by two is two, so it's two million. Our draw this year is then two million. The other thing we need to get our end base at the end of year one is our investment return. And I'll go up here to the top and you will see that the end base of the prior year becomes the starting base of the current year. So we've got a 45 million, and which means our investment um, uh, return, which is 10% of 45, is gonna be 4.5. 5 million. Now all I need to do is add the investment gain and the donations to the current base and then uh, subtract out the draw, the $2 million, to get the end base of our current year. So I do this calculation and I get 73 million. This then becomes the current base of year two. And I'm going to take 10% of that to get the investment return which is just 7.3 million. 
Um, we have 8.3 million in donations and now we need to calculate the draw. Again, here, um, we need the average of the prior three years um, and we need to multiply that by 5%. So let me clear out some space here and we can try out the residual method one last time. So here we've got 38, 45, and 73, and we need to know the average of this. So as a guess here, I'm gonna go with 60. Uh, all right. So what we've got here is uh, negative 22. We've got negative 15 and we've got positive 13. Okay, I can tell that I'm way off on this one. So what we have here is uh, the residuals, the sum of the residuals is now negative uh, 24. And so I'm off um, my, by quite a lot, my, my guess was too high. So I'm gonna divide negative 24 by three which equals negative eight, so I was off by eight. So my average is actually 52, okay? So I've got an average of 52 and I need to calculate 5% of that. So that equals, 10% uh, of it is equal to 5.2 and uh, half of that is equal to 2.6. So that's my draw in your that's my draw in year two. Now I need to just calculate my draw in year three. Oh, sorry, let's calculate the base first. After um, the base of uh, the end base of year two, I'm going to need to sum up um, all of these transactions in year two, and I get to 86 million. Great. Now I can finally calculate the draw of year three, and I'm going to do that. Um, I don't need to do any of the other calculations because as you will notice, to get to the draw of your three, all I need actually is the, um, the end base of the prior three years, which I already have right there. So this number um, will just be 5% uh, of the average of the prior three years. So I'm gonna do the residual method one last time and we'll get to that number. So now I've got 45, 73, and 86. And I'm going to guess, let's see, um, 70, okay. So I'm gonna do a 70 and a 70 and 70 and the differences here, 20, negative 25, 3, and 16, all right, so that's, uh, some of these two are, uh, some of this is 19, and 6, so that's negative 6, so I was a little bit off, um, so I get a um, negative 2 when I divide by 3, so I was off by negative 2, so the average is 68, and I want to uh, get 10% of that, which is 6.8, and half of that, which is 3.4 million. So I now know that our draw at the end of year th three is 3.4 million. So the expected endowment draw at the end of year three is $3.4 million. Remember to react to the answer. Is it high? Is it low? Does it meet our client's expectations or goals? $3.4 million exceeds Mrs. Jones' goal of three million, uh, of a $3 million draw by the end of the third year. So this would be a, con a successful donation campaign. The key to case math is to stay calm, be methodical, talk it through as you go, and be sharp on your mental math. Let me know in the comments if you got the answer right um, or if you used a different approach, um, I would love to hear that in the comments. Remember to join the waitlist for my monthly case workshops in the video description and practice more case math with me in this video next. Good luck.